Elfrie Loss Walkler, a shining example of feminism German modernism and progression. A painter in the rise of high culture in Europe, her work depicted humans in a way that would have been unrecognizable years prior. Her work, self-portrait, being a very obvious example. Here it lies, in the Kath Colbert's house, amongst many other works from female impressionist creators. The house has a focus on Kath, but houses the works of many women who fought to express themselves in Eastern Europe during the time of Nazi power. This is where her work should lie, her works being in museums that commemorate and honor both the craft and the bravery of these artists. Seeing as though there is no heirs within her lineage, it seems as though the only way left to honor her is this. The continuation of her artistry lives on through her observation and appreciation within the public sphere. Prior to this resting spot, it had floated through other Germanic and Russian museums, its first appearance to post-World War II world being in 1994, then it re-emerged in Hamburg, Germany, the last time it had been seen in the city since it had been in the hands of the Nazi party. It is the early 1920s, and modernism is in its peak. As Berlin enters into the Cultural Revolution, as does the individual within Germany, amongst the heartbreak and poverty that stemmed from the Treaty of Versailles came the artistry and innovation of German modernists. Art that glorified and humanized the marginalized individual came into the public sphere, celebrating those that were previously scorned by higher art culture. The legacy of women had begun as artists such as Elfried Los Wachtler came into the art world. Born in 1899, she had lived through the Great War and, like many of those within her homeland of Germany, had come out with an abstract view of the world. She began to see the need to capture and appreciate those on the outskirts of society. She began to paint sailors that came into the port of her home city of Hamburg, prostitutes that gave them companionship, and abstracted impressionistic views of the areas they occupied. Her depiction of anatomy was elongated and skewed showing each individual as a unique figure, some of them barely resembling the human form. Some of the most significant objects she portrayed were the mentally ill, who for the first time in art history were being displayed to the masses. This is shown not only in paintings such as female patient, but in her own self-portraits, plentiful as they were. With the rise of modernism soon followed the rise of what most previously thought to be a political minority, the rise of the Nazi party. The rise of the Nazi party brought with it to the Hamburg exhibition a collection that was available to most of the public, Jews and some other minorities excluded. The exhibition had six rooms with 249 works by 1940. It contained traditional accepted German art alongside avant-garde degenerate art. The degenerate art was displayed close together in an overwhelming fashion. Slang and degrading terminology was written alongside the art, prom promoting the degradation of these artists. One of the paintings that was confiscated and brought to the Hamburg Degenerate Art Exhibition was Los Wachler's self-portrait. It was painted shortly after being put into a mental institution committed by her husband. Due to her humiliating entrance to this museum, her husband and her did not stay together, leaving her no family and no heirs. Due to her self-image coming out of the hospital, she depicted herself as misshapen, stern, and worn out. Coming out of the psychiatric system that was put in place by harsh German scientists took a toll on her self-worth. She had suffered with schizophrenia for years and had been targeted by the Nazi party because of it. They attempted to sterilize her she attempted to deny this procedure, but she was unsuccessful. Her sense of self had been greatly distorted under the psychiatric care of the Nazi party. Common tactics included sterilization, unsanitary conditions, and euthanasia, also known as Akaton T4. This led to her ultimate demise, in which she was euthanized in 1940 by the Nazi party. At the time of her death, there was no family to carry on her legacy. Though notably painful to look at, Bosch Wachler's surviving work serves to cast a light on one of the darkest periods in the history of art. The many other artists who, like Alfred, suffered through it are now given the spotlight. Given that there are no legitimate heirs to this piece, by not allowing this work to continue to be displayed publicly, therefore killing her legacy would do a great disrespect to both her and her work. This is why we believe that it should stay 
in the house it resides in. Thank you.